Some of the most dramatic moments from this year's Arab Spring happened in February in Cairo, where weeks of protests eventually drove Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak right out of office. Since then, though, Egypt has lived under growing uncertainty. No one can predict where the democratic revolution will take this very important country. In our week-long series, The Arab Summer, we are taking a look at the ongoing struggle for democracy in that part of the world. This morning's focus is on Egypt. And CBS News correspondent Elizabeth Palmer is in Cairo with the latest on Egypt's road to democracy. Elizabeth Good morning. Hello, Chris. Well, uh, there are some bumps on the road, as you might imagine. This is where it all started most dramatically, where the government was really overthrown. Since then, uh, the country's ticking over, but people don't have for, uh, faith in the forces of security, especially the police, who were very loyal to the old regime. They beat people. There were arbitrary arrests. So that's a, a real nagging worry for people. However, we've been out in the countryside and talking to people in the city, and I... I dare say that there's a sense of cautious optimism, and even with elections looming this fall, some excitement. Four months ago, Tahrir Square, crammed with Egyptians, was the heart of an uprising that toppled Egypt's corrupt government. Today, it's back to being a traffic circle in the center of Cairo. Although, especially on Fridays, groups of young Egyptians still rally, keeping up the pressure for the shift to democratic rule. These days, Tahrir Square is still a focus of smaller demonstrations, but it's also turned into a kind of carnival of nationalism, a place where you can buy a t-shirt or a hat, or even get your hand and your arm painted. Egyptians love their country, and they're proud of what they call the revolution. Three solid weeks of stubborn and sometimes violent demonstrations that forced President Hosni Mubarak to quit in February after 30 years in power. It was a victory for reform, but a disaster for the economy, which is now the people's number one concern. Empty hotels and deserted attractions say it all. Tourism used to generate $4 billion a year. This March, earnings were down by two-thirds. Thousands of families, already poor, have lost their livelihoods. My horse died, explains Juma, a guide at the pyramids. I simply couldn't afford to feed him. Egypt's army, which sided with the people during the uprising, is now running the country, but plans to hand power back to civilians after elections this fall. And a controversial new player is on the scene, the Muslim Brotherhood. Banned by the old regime as an extremist group, it's now campaigning hard in the mainstream for votes, a prospect that has secular Egyptians rattled. I'm worried, for example, that um, would be one of those Muslim countries like Iran or like um, the Gulf and that everyone had to wear a veil and not, you know, mix in the street or at schools and so on. A recent poll showed only 15 percent of decided voters so far will support the Brotherhood, although a huge majority of Egyptians say they do intend to vote. Now all eyes are on ousted President Hosni Mubarak, who's actually under arrest and quite ill in the resort of Sharm el-Sheikh. The military says they are going to put him on trial for corruption in August. And if that does go ahead, it will be a powerful sign that the old guard will be forced out of power over the next year or two. Chris? CBS's Elizabeth Palmer in Cairo for us this morning. Elizabeth, thank you.